Hey guys, in today's episode, we tested out boost leaks. We all know they're not good for you, but we wanna know where exactly you see a power loss. Today, we tested it so you don't have to. Now for today's video, we have a Toyota 2JZ mounted on here. You might have seen this exact setup before when we did the 6870 comparison video. The only change now is that we have the Precision 6670 turbocharger and the boost is being controlled through these two tile wastegates. Now Wilson over here is having a pretty good day. Little smiley face. We're gonna have him turn into this guy right here with a frowny face and we'll be doing gradually larger holes throughout each run. Uh, we should be starting around an eighth of an inch and hopefully go all the way up to about an inch of a hole. And I think that we're gonna see a big change somewhere around half an inch. But I want you guys to let us know in the comment section below what your guess will be. Obviously it's gonna make less power at some point or we might see the turbocharger speed start to increase dramatically to try to keep that exact same boost target of 15 PSI. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do a baseline run of 15 PSI, see what this engine makes, see what the turbo shaft speed is like and um, see what we start working with. Let's check it out. That was pretty on the money. So we were targeting 15 pounds of boost. You can see across the whole RPM range, it's on that 15 pound target. And if we look a little closer in the ECU software, the log for that pass, the turbo speed was at 86,227 86, at its peak. So now we have a nice little baseline before we do any boost leaks, before we do any holes in the charge pipe, we wanna make sure that we're comparing everything to these numbers right there. So how much power was that right there, Brian? Uh, let's take a look. Okay, so a peak power of 694 horsepower and 465 pounds of torque. So once again, more baseline numbers. Let's go ahead and start doing the first control leak. And uh, let's rip out the drill. See what we can do to the poor old Wilson on that charge pipe. All right, so Wilson's going from a closed mouth smile to an open mouth smile because he likes to show his teeth. Unfortunately for Wilson, he doesn't really go to the dentist often, so he's got a little cavity, and that cavity is about to be poked out. Dentist Brian Fields, pull the whole tooth out. <laughs> so this right here, we're starting with an eighth of an inch, right, roughly? Yep. A little cavity. This will also be an educational video for children. Kids don't want to go to the dentist. Are you ready to go to Disneyland? Yeah. Make sure to go to the dentist, kids. It's like if you're purging nitrous. Okay, so this is, like we said, our first controlled leak test. Uh, before anything, we have to get back up to operating temperature. We always target the exact same oil temperature, the density altitude, everything is monitored through our Superflow engine dyno. And it's the data that we've collected and shown in previous videos, like the 6870 versus test. All of that stuff can be combed through and make sure that we have no variables or as least variables as possible to make sure our uh, actual test is reflecting true data. So right now, eighth inch hole is what we're working with, yep. right, Brian? Yep. What do you think is going to happen with it? I don't think anything's going to make it. Difference. No change? Okay. I think if anything, we might see a little more turbo speed, but I feel like it's still going to make the same amount of boost and very, very similar power. Yep. Wow. 
and that's really close. So the red line is the new run. The blue one is the first run. It switches over, the newest run turns red. How much power? Is there any power difference in there, Brian? So, very, very close. Shaft speed, uh, we're looking at 86,500, so that's slightly more than our last run. I believe it was 86,200. So that's pretty close. The turbocharger speed was very, very close to the previous run, uh, within a couple hundred RPM, and the boost itself was right on the money. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, that didn't make much difference. Let's go up to a quarter inch hole. <laughs> Let's make the hole bigger. <laughs> SMR. Definitely go to the dentist. So once again, we're going back through the warm-up procedure, getting it to that same operating temperature. I think we'll start to see a little bit more of a change here, Ryan. Yeah, not much. We'll see. I think half inch will notice a big difference. Once it's big enough for you to stick a finger in it, I think it's going to really, really start affecting power. <laughs> Just so you guys are a little more familiar with our engine dyno, on the right hand side we have a table that uses a fuel cell, we have a level sensor on the side of it, we run one ethanol R, which is the fuel for all of our tests here, yep. and it's um, a, a very nice consistent fuel, we just enjoy using something that's easy to grab off the shelf and put it in the engine, have no questions of if it'll run right, because yep. we know that it's already set up for that. But everything else should be good, we're almost at operating temperature, we're getting ready to do the second or actually third run, yep. this one with a quarter inch hole rather than an eighth inch hole. I still think that's gonna be very, very similar. I don't think we're gonna see much power loss at all, if any, no. and uh, maybe turbo speed continues to go up to try to compensate for that, but I don't know. I think it's pretty good. What do you think? Yeah. I think once we get to that half inch mark, we'll see some change. Oh, right, see right, once it's a lot bigger. So yeah. without further ado, we're a few degrees off. Let's kick it and do a pull. Okay, so once again, like we mentioned before, the, the latest run is that red line right there. So, looks like it's making more back pressure. That's an interesting point right there. Um, the boost looks very, very similar to the other ones, but the back pressure really stands out. I can't believe that it's that much higher. So yeah, so here's our power from all three pools. You can see they are all very, very similar right there. So, not a whole lot of change in power band or peak power. Um, they're all very, very close to each other. Let's see, the back pressure is the thing that stood out to me the most. More back pressure with this latest pool. Looking at the dynograph now, you'll notice that there is an increase of back pressure versus the boost staying very similar, if not a little bit lower than the initial test. Why exactly is it doing that? The turbo is now having to do more work to achieve the same or similar boost, and the turbine speed is increasing. That's gonna create more back pressure, and it's not gonna create more boost, since obviously we have a big hole in the charge fire. I think you're only, it, you're only holding four pounds right now. That's it? Yeah. What? Now you're at five. Let's just hold it, let it fill up a little. Now you're at eight. It'll, it'll pop really good now. Ready? Let's see, red line being the most recent once it updates. Back pressure up and boost down. Oh yeah. Proof is in the pudding. All right, let's check out this turbo speed. 88,000, okay, so 88,500. Let's Sierra see the power. power. Oh, it's oh, wow. way down, look at that. Oh, wow. So these are the previous runs overlaid. Our control, then our two controlled leaks, and now this is our third leak, half an inch. You can definitely see a decline in power and torque across the whole power band. And looks like for boost, we lost what, about a pound? Pound and a half? Yeah, if not more. That's yeah, that, that last one right there. About, yeah. So that's pretty substantial. And the back pressure is way up right there compared to before. That's a perfect indication of why you want to monitor these things yep. at the racetrack. You want to be able to check things like your back pressure, 
your turbo speed. And if you're racing a car that doesn't have a lot of changes often, you can look at these two numbers, uh, well actually three, the, the boost, the back pressure, and the turbo speed to have a control for your normal race environment. Once you start to see some change there, maybe you're down some mile an hour, you're trying to figure out what's going on, having these tools and having the ability to look at this data is so important in any race program. So oh, yeah. that's awesome. Let's go bigger on this hole. Let's see what it does with, what's next, a full inch? Um, let's do three quarters. Three quarters inch, okay. Yeah, let's go for that. And then um, hopefully we see a huge change, but uh, right off the bat, it's, it's looking real promising for data. For sure, this is fun. I think a good comparison is the quarter inch hole would be equivalent to like a blow off valve vacuum hose coming off. Okay. And a half inch hole would be equivalent to like a brake booster hose coming off. So that's a cool test. What do you think a uh, three quarters inch hole is going to be equivalent to? Uh, your idle air control motor falling off. That's a good comparison. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and drill that bad boy out. I'm interested to see there's a visual representation, very scientific method right here, that we can see of this boost leak. <laughs> 13 and change, 13. We're up on back pressure there. Wonder by how much, whoa! Okay, so 21, almost 21 and a half pounds of back pressure. Down on boost. So that's pretty significant right there. Yeah. And see those two numbers just continue to drift apart from everything else. So let's see the, she the speed. Oh man, we hit 90,000 on the turbocharger speed. So that's up from the original 86,200, I believe was the baseline run. And 90,000, that's, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's yeah, going faster and faster. Power losses. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That. Where's that? Roughly. Where are we at in that line? It's about 50 horsepower from our yeah. baseline. Yeah. That's a good amount of power loss. But it took that large of a hole to actually show up. Yep. I mean, those first three runs were so close together that once you get up to that half inch, three quarter inch is when it really starts to shine. So just like you were saying, a, a, a brake booster line or a couple vacuum lines all together really does do an effect. That's interesting. What's super cool though is the, the shaft speed. Yep. That's interesting to see it keep on growing and growing. So the computer is doing its best to try to still make that 15 pound of boost target, but there's only so much that it's allowed to do and so much that it can do. So it's very interesting. I think we up it one more and try to go for the full incher. Sure, let's do a full incher. <laughs> let's do it. I think this should be our final pool for terms of getting the width of the hole bigger. Yep. I predict that in this case, we're gonna see not only about 50 horsepower loss like we did previously, but we're also gonna see the back pressure go way up trying to do its thing, but. Turbo speed will go up. Continue to go up. I mean, we've seen that. It's kind of a trend at this point. Definitely don't do this at home. If you're trying to make power, don't drill holes in your intake because this yep. will happen. Yep. Inefficient. down on power there. Look at that. That is a crazy difference. I mean, that's what we expected. Obviously, it's gonna continue to drop more and more power. That's just over 550, so like 570-ish right there, when when we started, it was nearly 700. So that's a, a huge spread right there. Uh, turbo speed got up to 93,491. So the turbo's definitely working overtime, trying to make it happen. Back pressure. 24 pounds of back pressure, and the boost was what? 13, uh, almost 13, 12, five? Yeah, about 12. The so, end, yeah. literally double the back pressure yep. to try to still 
survive at that. So wow, that's uh, yeah. that sucks. That does suck. It's, it's not a good day. Back, the back pressure is double of what we started from on our baseline. So yeah. So this is our first graph, uh, which is our mainline graph. You can see it crossed over, and on our newest pole, our back pressure was always above our boost, which is really cool to see. Right. Yeah, it never, never overlapped. Yeah, so typically on a car that's running well, you'll see that somewhere in the higher RPMs, right? You'll, you'll have the, brake, the, the back pressure overcome the, the boost, whereas right here it never even got to that point. So that's, that's definitely interesting to see. Good, uh, good eye on pointing that out. Yeah. It's very cool. So for that last pool, we only made about 12 PSI. So what we're doing now, we want to have the computer adjust the boost settings so that we're able to hit that 15 PSI target. Yep. Um, we did some adjustments here. I think that this should achieve that. Obviously, it's still going to have more back pressure. It's, it's still gonna run the turbo harder, but let's see exactly by how much. So let's hope that this one hits 15 pounds around that mark. Yep, we'll and see um, our turbo shaft speed is. This should really increase. Should increase. Let's check this out. Wow, so it looks like shaft speed got up to 102,000 RPM, which is it's pretty crazy if you ask me. Like I said, guys, this was us making the computer add more to be able to try to hit that original 15 pound target. It's gonna be extremely difficult to do that with a giant hole in your charge pipe, so you, you can't ask it to be right on the money like it was originally, but it's, it's very interesting to see, just like on the previous runs with the large hole, the back pressure is always and continuously way above the boost pressure. And what did it make for power right there? Same PSI, but obviously a lot less air. Wow, so yeah, that's way down. From high yep. 600s to yeah. 620, is that? It's 630? 80, 80, power, uh, 80 horsepower different. Same PSI. Wow, that's interesting. And the back pressure, when you look, it's two to one compared to the boost. Yeah. Which is literally compared double. Compared to before, it's not even one and a half to one. Right. So. Which on, on turbochargers, when you're pushing them super, super hard, you'll start to see that back pressure naturally happen with large amounts of boost. But this turbocharger wouldn't react like that, as you saw under normal circumstances. Yeah. So yeah, really uh, interesting stuff. Level. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now that we're done with the testing, there are a few things that we want to actually touch on about the information that we were presenting and why we actually did this test. It's very obvious. You don't want holes in your charge pipe system. This is more of a what would happen scenario. So some of you guys with a very good eye might have noticed the run orders are a little different towards the beginning and the end of the test. If you go very closely to the top of the dynographs, you'll see the run order number. And at the very beginning, the first test that we did was 11, and then the first controlled leak was 13. What happened to 12? If we ever abort a run or we don't find the data to be clean for us to present it to you guys, then we'll just redo the run and it'll log to the next number. At the end of the test, we finished at 17 and we were trying a whole bunch of funky stuff to try to get that boost back to 15, which is nearly impossible when you think about it. We have an inch diameter hole in the charge pipe. So how are you gonna still try to manipulate the ECU to make that 15 PSI target? So from that 17 run, we had to do a couple things and we tried a couple methods to finally get it to that close 15 PSI mark. And we ended up doing that at run number 21. Obviously this ended up just being a really fun video that we can mess around with the engine dyno a little bit more. I think being able to approach this whole engine dyno series with the open mentality of, I have this opinion of how something works, let's see if it's actually true, is gonna give us a lot of valuable information to be able to provide the community with. Me personally, I've always thought that if you had this hairline boost leak or if you had a gasket that wasn't perfectly sealed, it would be this giant problem in any system. Now, obviously, it's not a good thing to have boost leaks, but now we know that it's not a huge problem until you get to that larger diameter hole like we saw today. I'm not advocating for boost leaks. Please fix your system. You don't want to show up to a dyno appointment and have issues, but if you're at the racetrack and you start having little issues, you don't have to break your head over it. I want to hear what you guys would like to see us test next on the engine dyno. There's a lot of age-old myths that we might have heard from generations before us, and we would love to test more things like that. Thanks for watching, guys, like always, and we'll see you on the next video. We're happy to do stuff like this, and we can't wait to do more.